Okay, so today we're going to talk about sharpness. Um, there's a couple of technical things that you can use to crisp up your photos a little bit. Uh, it's obviously not as important as the composition of your photograph or the actual image that you manage to capture, but hopefully with a couple of somewhat flexible rules you can get your photos as crispy as you'd like them to be. To start with, we're going to look at shutter speeds. Uh, generally speaking, th there is no real ex perfect hard and fast rule because um, the nature of the action moving across your lens is largely going to determine what shutter speed that you need to shoot at. If the action is coming backwards and forwards in and out of the lens, then you're going to get away with a slower shutter speed than if it's moving across the lens. However, having said that, there are a couple of uh, guideline shutter speeds you can use. If someone's coming more or less backwards and forwards into your frame, then you can probably get down to about 800 or 640th of a second on the digital cameras. Or if they're going across, you want to definitely try and scrape as high above a thousandth of a second as you possibly can. Another thing that also makes a difference is if you're actually panning with the movement of the skater. This is especially relevant with the digital SLRs that only sync depending on if you're using a Pocket Wizard T1 or T5 that sync at about 250th of a second, so you're going to need to pan with them. As you can see on this uh, last trick of Boo Johnson as he was warming up, we're kind of getting late in the year now, so the light's starting to go pretty quick and we're shooting straight into it. So actually got down to 640th of a second at the end there because um, it was so low, but fortunately being so close and panning with him, it's not quite so critical. If you're shooting a sequence where I was there, the size that the photo is going to run is going to be that much smaller than a spread, say, that you can actually get away with going even lower. So you want to bear that in mind as well. Another thing you can use that's a really good help is getting one of these loops for the back of your digital camera. Unfortunately, this won't help the bad boys shooting film. Um, they'll help you get a much more accurate view of the image so that when you get home and look at it on the computer screen, you're not disappointed. Um, you want to try and zoom in at the point of the action where there's the most amount of movement going on and then have a look at their feet, their face or the board, whatever. So in this case, round about here, make sure it's all nice and sharp so that he can get his photo incentive. Looks pretty kosher. Now having said all of that, obviously the rules are there to be learnt so that you can get a certain type of image. Don't get too hung up on trying to get really sharp crispy photos because quite often the ones that have got a little bit of movement or aren't perfectly sharp are the ones that actually look the most pinnacle. So I hope this has helped out and see you for the next instalment.